you'll need a pencil and paper. At a couple points in the video, I'm going to ask you to pause and work something out for yourself. What we're going to do is we'll find the absolute max and min values of this function, where x and y are, lie in a triangle defined by these three points. Let's draw those three points and see the triangle they define. x-axis, y-axis. There's the point 0, 0, 3, 0, and 3, 2. OK. There's the triangle. x and y are going to live in here, and we're going to find the absolute max and min of the function. If I draw this in 3 space, here's the y-axis x-axis and the z-axis. The triangle looks like this. Oops. Maybe like this. Okay, now there's some piece of a surface defined on that triangle. Maybe it looks like this. We're not quite sure what it looks like. But we want to know what the highest and lowest points are on that surface over this triangle. Now the great thing is we don't need to know what the surface looks like. We can solve this problem using only differentiation and not have to graph and try to guess anything. So for instance, maybe the surface looks like that, but there are other possibilities. Maybe the surface looks something like this. A hilltop in the middle maximum point right inside the triangle. Or maybe if you flip that upside down, maybe it has a minimum point inside the triangle. Or maybe the surface looks, I don't know, something like this, and the maximum point occurs, in fact, somewhere along the edge. Maybe the minimum point occurs at a vertex. Or maybe along another edge, the absolute minimum occurs somewhere along an edge. We don't know until we work out some details. The first thing we're going to do is find any critical points that lie inside this triangle. If we find a critical point of the function that lies outside the triangle, well, it just doesn't concern us. So let's start by taking the de partial derivatives of this function. There they are. And if you set them equal to 0, you find that you get x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. So there is a critical point at 2, 1. We don't know if it's a max or a min or a saddle, but we don't need to. All we need to do for now is just evaluate the function at that critical point. You plug it in, you get 0. Now we're just going to put that that's just going to be one number of many that we're going to have in a list. And in the end, we're just going to look at our list of numbers and pick off the highest one and the lowest one, and those will be our absolute max and min. Let's next work out the values of the function at the three corners of the triangle. When you do that, you get f at 0, 0 is minus 1. f at 3, 0 is well, maybe you want to pause the video and just work those out for a moment. And if you do, you find you get minus 2.5 and minus 2.5 for the other two vertices. Okay, so so far we have a list of four numbers. 0, minus 1, minus 2.5, and minus 2.5. The largest of those is 0, and the smallest is minus 2.5, but we won't know whether that's the absolute max and the absolute min until we rule out the possibility that the, the, the surface actually reaches its max or, or min somewhere along an edge. So what we have to do now is look at the values of the function along these three lines, L1, L2, L3, that define the boundary of the triangle. So let's first move along L1. How would you describe this line L1? Well, x can vary. x can go between 0 and 3, but y is always 0. So if y is always 0 and x can vary, then the height of the surface will be determined by the expression where you replace y with 0. And that'll give you 1 half 
x minus 2 squared minus 3. Now this quantity here gives the height of the surface along line L1. We already worked out what the height of the surface is at each end point of this. There we had 0, 0. And here we found it at 3, 0. And now we want to know, is there some value of x between 0 and 3 for which this quantity here reaches its maximum or its minimum? So to answer that question, we're going to take the derivative of that quantity and set it equal to 0. When you do that, uh, the derivative is x minus 2. You set it equal to 0, and that occurs when x is equal to 2. Okay. Now, let's evaluate the function when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 0. x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. When you do that, you get f at 2, 0 is minus 3. Aha! So there's, if you compare that with our previous list of numbers, we see now this is a new candidate for the absolute min because it's less than minus 2.5. But we've only done this along one line. We now have to repeat this exercise along the other two lines. So let's move along L2. How would you describe this line here, L2? I'd say, well, x is always 3, and y is allowed to vary between 0 and 2. Well, if x is always 3, just replace x with 3 in the expression for x and y and you'll get this quantity here. Again, this quantity gives the height of the surface along L2, and we're wondering, does it reach its max or min for some y between 0 and 2? And once again, we'll set the derivative equal to 0. The derivative will be minus 6y minus 1, and that'll give y is equal to 1. So now we evaluate the function when x is 3 and y is equal to 1. x is 3, y is 1. And when you evaluate, you get f at 3 and 1 is 1 half. Aha! Uh -huh. Our previous uh, biggest number in our list was 0. But now we found that the function can actually take on a higher value, a half, at the point uh, 3, 1. We still have one line left to do. So now, along L3. Well, here's L3 here. How would you describe it? Take a moment and see if you can come up with the equation for that line. Pause the video if you have to. That line between 0 and 0, 0, 0, and 3, 2 has equation y equals 2 thirds x. So y equals 2 thirds x. The height of the uh, surface along that line just replace y with 2 thirds x. We get 1 half x minus 2 squared minus 3. 2 thirds x minus 1 squared. Once again, set the derivative equal to 0. And I'll leave that for you to do. You'll find that you'll get x is equal to 6 over 5. And then what should y be? Well, you would determine what y is when x is 6 over 5 by plugging 6 fifths into the equation for that line, L3. That'll give you y is equal to 4 fifths, and you can work this out if you like. f at 6 fifths, 4 fifths is in fact 1 fifth, which is not bigger than, our, than, the, um, than the largest number we just found, which was a half. So when you compare our list of numbers, let me circle this one a moment, compare our list of numbers, 0, minus 1, minus 2.5, and minus 2.5 minus 3, a half, and 1 fifth. The absolute maximum is a half. That occurs at 3, 1. 
and the absolute minimum is minus 3. That occurs at 2, 0. This is a graph of the function. You see that it's defined over that triangle. And you can see right here that the absolute maximum occurs on this boundary, on that line L2, at the point 3, 1. And the absolute minimum occurs along this boundary here at the point 2, 0.